Hi, welcome to another video based on the Cedra uh, Smith book. Uh, the topic that uh, I'm going to be covering is the frequency response of a common source amplifier. And this is a topic that I recently uh, talked to, or actually tutored my son. And uh, and the topic or the technique that I use is the open time constant. And basically, uh, uh, with this technique, you can estimate the bandwidth of uh, various amplifiers. So the topology that I'll be using for the design example, or actually the analysis example, is the common source. So this is your gate here's your drain and here's your source okay and the model that I'll be using to simulate to vary uh, to verify my hand analysis I'm using the EPC 2012 uh, it's actually a gallium a nitrite uh, MOSFET it's supposed to be a very fast MOSFET and uh, has small capacitance anyway it has the C GS, meaning that it has a capacitance from the gate to source of 124.7 picofarads, and it has a capacitance from the drain, or actually from the gate to the drain, of 3.3 picofarads. Actually, these are small, pretty small, uh, considering that this is a power fit. You can draw up to, uh, I believe, uh, 14, 14 amps or something like that. So it's a high power. But it, but it comes in a very very small package. Anyway, uh, in the design example, I'm powering uh, with VDD of 12 volts, and I'm using a R load of 1K, and I'm assuming that I would be testing this with a function generator. The output impedance of most function generators are 50 ohms. So this would be what we would uh, actually uh, analyze. Okay, now to properly bias this, I would want approximately six volts at the drain. Okay, so that means I'm going to have six volts drop across this 1K, so I need about six milliamps. Okay, so that would be my QSent current at the drain. So basically I would need 6 milliamps. Okay. Now to calculate or to actually set this current or QS current we would use your MOSFET equation okay and you would calculate the VGS that you would uh, that you would have to uh, uh, calculate that would give you the 6 uh, milliamps of current and, and therefore give you your uh, 6 volts at the drain. Uh, when you solve for VGS you get this equation okay and I forgot to mention that the KP of the EPC 2012 is 6.863 amps per volt squared and the threshold voltage is 1.293 volts. Okay, so those are the parameters that you need: KP, VTH, and of course CGS and CGD. Okay. Anyway, when you do the calculations, you need 1.3348 volts to give you the proper QSA current. And I went ahead and calculated. GM because that's another parameter that you will need to estimate the bandwidth. So in this case, here's that parameter, which is 0 0.2869 uh, amps per volt. Okay. So basically, to do the OT OTC, what you want to do is you want to do your small signal model. And what you want to do is you want to include the capacitance. Uh, 
So here is the capacitance from the gate to source, okay, and you have the capacitance from your gate to drain. And this CGS is, is re also referred as the Miller cap. This is a very important concept. Basically, Miller cap because you have an inversion, especially in a common source, you actually have an amplification of this capacitor. Okay, the higher the gain, the higher this cap gets multiplied. Okay, so continuing with the analysis to calculate uh, the bandwidth, what you do basically is you try to calculate or you 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 insert where the capacitor is. You do a you insert a, th a test voltage, okay, and of course with that test voltage you're going to have a test current and basically you want to do your VT over IT which is the impedance uh, that would be that would that that capacitor would see across the gate and the source so let me s go ahead and show that here okay so basically the idea is to substitute of test voltage across a capacitor of interest and derive the resistance C's. Okay. So in this case I substituted a test voltage for CGS. Okay. Now if you do a loop or a KVL across this loop right here, you end up with this equation which is VT in other words, it's the voltage across uh, VGS is actually VT, okay, minus IT in RG, okay, and then that goes back here. So basically, you only have two terms, so that equals to zero, okay. You rearrange this, and you end up that the resistance that the capacitor sees is actually RG. So this one's pretty pretty easy. Basically the capacitance or the time constant is actually RG which is 50 ohms times uh, the capacitance which is I believe was 124 124.7 124.7 picofarads, okay, and when you plug that in, you get that time constant, okay, and when you put that time constant under here in the denominator with uh, 2 pi, and you calculate the capac uh, the frequency, the input node, or the bandwidth of that capacitor is 25.6 megahertz, so that's important, so that's, you're halfway there. Okay, so now you do the same technique. Now, instead, now we're going to try and figure out what the capacitance that the meter cap would see. And instead of having the capacitor here, you place your VT. And here, I put the VT like so, between the gate and the drain. Okay, that VT is going to drain generate a IT current that goes in this direction okay and after we we've done this uh, the small signal model I usually define my VGS okay in terms of VT and IT if possible okay and I say that VGS is actually VG minus VS but if you see the VS is connected to ground, so this term goes to zero. Okay, so now I just have to define VG, and if I see VG, I notice that IT is flowing and goes to ground. So basically, you're gonna have VG be IT times RG. Okay, so come up with another equation basically since 
uh, the voltage at the source is zero, you can say then that VGS is actually IT times RG. Okay. Okay. So now the next step is we need to do a KCL at the drain. Okay. Which is right here. So we want to see what are the currents that are leaving. Okay. We know that the current IT is leaving the node and typically if it's leaving I said that is positive and you have GM which is another current GM VGS is leaving that's a positive and then you also have this current I I label it as IX okay that's entering the node so I label that as negative so you come up with this equation which is IT plus GM VGS minus IX okay and then what I did is I, I went ahead and uh, solved for IX and I get that equation okay so I'm up to there okay so now I have these two equations, this one, and I have this one here. And I've noticed I have VT, IT on both equations, but I don't have VT. So I need to define somehow, set up VT. Okay. So if I look at VT, which is right here, well, I can say that VT is actually VG minus. VD okay which is what I did right here this is VD okay so VT which is the test voltage is VG minus VD therefore we can substitute these basically that goes in there okay and and we know that VD is actually minus IX times RG and that can be substituted in there so basically I get this equation okay here's the IT no IX times RL and because there's a minus and a minus becomes a plus. Anyway, I'm up to that equation. So, as I expand this and do the algebra, I end up with this equation. Okay. So this is uh, units would be volts and amps, which is impedance or resistance. Okay, so here is the impedance. This is the equation. So now, tau two is this impedance, okay, times the Miller cap, which is C G D. Okay, when you plug in the numbers, you end up with fifty point six nanoseconds. Okay, so now this is the time constant at the output node okay so you have two time constants you have the time constants at the input node and then you have the time constant at the output node so this is very powerful in that it tells you that the input since it has a smaller time constant it means that it's it has a it's faster and if it's faster that means that the bandwidth is higher okay and also tells you that T2 which is the output is bigger than this so this means that the output node is the slowest okay so if you want to improve uh, on the bandwidth you don't work on the input you work on the output. The output is what's slowing you down. Okay.
So now to find the overall uh, bandwidth, you use the formula bandwidth and you plug in your T1 and your T2. Okay, so you add the time constant and you I calculated a bandwidth of 2.803 megahertz. So this is the bandwidth that uh, I calculated. Okay. So what's nice about the OTC is that it gives you insight which node is actually limiting your app. Okay. So here is the the spice model. Okay. Uh, these are the spice parameter, and uh, these are the uh, the spice parameters that define uh, the capacitance from the gate to source and drain to gate. Okay, and it's a EPC 2012. And if you remember, I calculated that I needed a voltage of. 1.3348 so I have biased it with 1.3348 okay and I enabled the AC response of 1 okay this is my output node I have a resistance of a thousand at the drain and 50 ohms at the gate okay and to plot the AC output I put the pound auto plot AC VD, uh, VDB, which is decibels, and out. Okay. Then I go into the setup. In this case, I'm doing a frequency response from 1 hertz to 100 meg. Okay. With a thousand points per decade. Okay. So it's already set up. All I have to do is run. Okay, press OK, and here's the response. Initially, you can see that it has quite a bit of gain. Okay, it has a gain of f almost 50. It's 49.12. Okay, and I do the delta x1, no, delta y2 minus y1. Excuse me. I put this back here and I move this until I get close to 3 that's 3 and if you look at the frequency right there it says 2.81 okay so the corner frequency is 2.818 Okay, so this shows that the technique is uh, fairly accurate, or at least it gives you in the ballpark, which is close to what I had calculated, 2.8 megahertz, and I had calculated 2.803 megahertz, which is good. Okay, uh, hopefully this technique will help you in analyzing uh, some of the other circuits. Uh, I would probably do a uh, frequency response on a common uh, drain and probably a common gate. Thank you for watching.